So what my organization is called Guru, so I built this prototype while I was at Google. Then I spent one year talking to all the teachers and saying, hey, how about a Google Maps for learning kind of stuff. So everybody said, uh, come on, you have to be kidding. This can't be true. And then I showed stuff. I explained a whole bunch. And at the end, they were encouraging enough to say, OK, let's try it. If you leave Google, we'll work with you. We'll work with you, and we will kind of help you build this stuff. So now, it has been five years. So I formed this organization called Guru. So everything we do at Guru, we believe education is a human right. So everything we do is free, and everything we do is open. Right? So, so there's no, this is, I'm not a vendor. I don't have anything to sell to you. And what I care deeply about is that is the student learning or not? If the student is not learning, it doesn't matter what product we build. Right? So, um, so we had, so last year was our first year where we did some research on students who are learning with the learning navigator, right? So this is a typical situation in an American uh, inner city school. A classroom for ninth grade, ninth standard classroom, has students who are at second grade level, right? And so if the teacher is teaching ninth standard math, ninth grade math, how to solve systems of equation. And the student doesn't know how to add two-digit numbers, right? What's going to happen? It's 180 days wasted for that student. At that critical point in their life, 180 days, they're going to sit in the class, waste 180 days, then say, I hate math, then say, math is boring, right? For the rest of the life, we don't have a mathematician, for sure. We have lost one, right? So, so this is the spread. 80% of the students are below ninth grade level in their preparedness. 80% of the class, right? So in America, there's uh, an indicator of uh, the type of school which shows what kind of demographics does it have. This school, this set of schools have 82% of them are, you know, in the low income uh, range. So low social, so, uh, socioeconomic segment. And, you know, 83% of them, if they go to college, will be the first ones in their family ever to go to college. So that's the profile, right? So we said, hey, let's kind of make, if the navigator has to work, then it has to work for that segment. Because I'm sure all of your kids are doing really well. And so are mine. Right? Because... You know, our kids have the advantage of the right parent, the right economic condition, resources, home environment, all of the, your friends who show up on a weekend uh, for a party also have advanced degrees and uh, they're also very smart. Their kids are also very smart. So our kids are doing just fine within the system. So the system is working. It just works for some of us. Right? Now the question is, how do we make it work for all of us? Right? I'm not saying the system is broken and we are going to fix it. I'm saying the system works. It works for some of us. We need to make it work for all of us, for which we need to give the teacher and the student a tool like the learning navigator. Yeah? So, the first thing about maths is you need roads. And there's nothing to do mapping about if you don't have roads or trains or some uh, bike paths or hiking trails. Or you need paths, right? Now, in the case of maps, the government builds all these paths. But here, we need educators to build these paths because, you know, what does anyone else know about how to build these paths? So we went about creating this. We like Google search. We looked at the web. We built a search engine. We said, hey, let's crawl and understand all the learning resources that are out there on the web first, right? So, uh, so we kind of looked at all the learning resources that are there on the web from different sites. And then we brought in over a million teachers on the web to 
build all kinds of uh, courses, right? And this is completely, it's open, it's free. Whatever any teacher does, any other teacher can copy. So you can come and say, okay, I'm going to teach, uh, uh, let, let's say, uh, Earth's um, biology. You can say, show me other teacher's course on biology. I can pick that course. You can turn it around because your students are advanced or whatever the characteristic of your classes you can edit it yourself and use that becomes the map for your class that becomes the road network for your class right so you have created a very very personalized road network for your class we still have to kind of deal with that individual student but what this approach gave us was massive amount of road networks got created everybody is building assessments everybody is building lessons People are checking out which video is good to teach uh, trigonometry or which video is good to teach uh, nouns and pronouns and kind of, uh, you know, curating all of that stuff. So we got everybody, and these are all high quality educators like yourself, right? So we got everybody to come and say, okay, let me build you one lesson, let me build you one unit, let me build you one uh, course, right? But everybody can share it, it's all shared. And we built uh, a search engine so that we could tell what's a high quality course, what's a low quality lesson and things of that nature. So we could kind of do the ranking like uh, Google search does. So we said, hey, let's build this massive network. Let's just open it up, let people come and start building and then we'll build a quality process. Right? So, um, so learning occurs when educated, curated experiences students have access to that, right? So the key here, you know, one of the central beliefs at Guru is learning begins with the teacher, right? This is not about the student and the machine. It is about the student with the teacher, right? Learning is not a transaction. Learning is a relationship. It's a sequence of interactions with other humans that produces learning. It's not about reading a chapter, watching a video, and taking a quiz kind of stuff, right? So now when you interact with content, that content has to be curated by some expert. You can't just interact with Wikipedia, otherwise I can read all Wikipedia pages and I can uh, know everything there is to know kind of stuff, right? And uh, so, so, you know, you can go check out guru.org and uh, this product is uh, currently there. So the most, you know, one of the central things about building or thinking about it from maths is in maths you cannot get one thing wrong. If one road's one way is marked incorrectly, then you can imagine the whole hell breaks loose, right? You can't get one thing wrong. The quality bar has to be so high. So, so we focused a lot on quality. He said, yes, you know, we'll get the whole world to come and build lessons. As long as you build a lesson that you're going to use with your class, that's fine. You're responsible for your class. But if we want you to share your lesson with someone, let's make sure we put a quality bar. Right? And uh, quality bar, quality process, all of that stuff. So we said it has to be reviewed by other teachers. It has to be reviewed by your school district or county or whatever the hierarchy here is. Right? It has to be, um, it has to go through our rubric. We put out a rubric saying here is the uh, way to check how, what the quality of your stuff, right? So, so we absolutely focused on quality, quality of content. So we have millions of learning resources. These are all open resources on the web, whatever you can find in Google search, right? Except that you don't have to search for everything on Google. Here are only education resources that we have picked, quality ones, right? Teachers have built thousands of collections. Think of a collection as a playlist. It's a, you know, the way you learn atoms and molecules is to watch this video, do this project, answer this quiz, and read this chapter. There are four things, four activities for you to learn atoms and molecules. Right? So some teachers has put that together. We call that a collection. We have thousands of collections constantly being created, high quality ones. So there are, uh, you know, we then had featured 35 courses. 
So within Guru, in the last two weeks alone, right, there have been over 20,000 courses. So some teacher comes, she'll find that course, she'll copy that course, and then she'll edit it and she'll use it, right? So we don't feature all 20,000 courses because they have to go through our quality check. And we say, hey, we feature 35 courses. These are high quality courses. We see the data analytics at the back end. Who is using it? Does it produce learning for the student? We know that with this course. And we say, yep, that's a featured course, right? So um, we have complete diversity of resources. So not all students learn the same way. Not all students will learn uh, reading textbooks, or not all students will learn watching videos. Not all students can learn doing projects. 